it's a trick of the devil, okay. Um, always, sometimes, when you are preaching the gospel is online, there will be a thing. Okay? So we can pray. What we Lord right now? We can read the Bible verse, book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 21. In this Bible saying, and it shall be saying that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us raise our hand. Heavenly Father, the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for this section right now. Heavenly Father, when the time of preaching this gospel, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let all the people receive the salvation. Thank you for your touching the mind of the people and let them receive that you are the living God in their heart. Father God, I pray for all the people right now, especially the people, those who are suffering the sickness, the loneliness, the lots of infirmities are happening in their life. Heavenly Father, I pray for them. Thank you, God. You are touching them and healing. I pray for this man of God. Pastor Dennis is sharing this word of God. Heavenly Father, I pray and bless his past. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 So, Sheikh Dinesh Niyuki is very happy to invite Pastor Dennis to pray this gospel to everybody. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Jolly. Uh, it is my honor and my privilege this afternoon to be with you on this platform with the rest of the servants of God that are also uh, on this platform tonight. I want to say that God is good. Uh, we can cast our care upon him because he cares for us. Tonight, it's my happy privilege. I bring greetings from South Africa, and uh, it's laid upon my heart that we speak the gospel, uh, encouraging people to be strong, not to give up, not to fall on the wayside, because Jesus is with you at all times. Remember that. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll be with you all the time. And tonight, we trust God. In him, we believe that he is able to do all things in our lives and bring it to pass. Tonight, I'm going to take you through the portions of Scripture and uh, where Paul, the Apostle Paul, concludes by saying in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Now, let me tell you, there's a beginning and there's an end to everything. So after Paul has preached his message, these were the last words to the Ephesian church. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. And then he goes on further. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the vials of the devil. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are more than conquerors in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God has given us this authority that we can bring down the strongholds of the enemy and walk all over it. But sadly said, though, that being believers today, we do not agree with the word of God. We fail to put on the old armor because many of us <clears throat> feel that we will not be attacked. But remember, the fear doubts of the devil is always against the children of God. So therefore Paul reminds us he says put on this armor of God. Resist the devil. 
and he shall flee from you. Resisting the devil means you need to be strong in the word. So every fear he does that's pointing towards you, And the powers of darkness in high places. Listen to me very carefully. The armor of God represents the defense we must take in our spiritual life. We need to defend, be defensive. We are in the battlefield. The Bible tells us that we are fighting a war against Satan, the devil, that has come to seek, to kill, to rob, and destroy. But thank God, Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. Therefore, we must take action and put on the armor of God. Without the armor, without the spiritual ammunition, which is the word, the sword of the spirit, the helmet of salvation. These all make up the armor of God. Remember, you cannot go to war without any ammunition. You need to be prepared and you must be able to fight a good fight. Hallelujah. This war is a spiritual war. It's not carnal. So you must be filled with the Holy Ghost and power. All fired up. That when the devil sees you, he doesn't see you as an ordinary person. He sees Christ Jesus in you. And therefore, I am yet to encourage you this afternoon. Never give up. Never fight your own battle. The battle is the Lord's, and the victory is yours. Apostle Paul encourages, we the saints of God, from now onwards, you need to behave with firmness and consistency of your mind. Be firm in your belief. Don't be moved. Let your mindset be upon God. Remember you are built upon this rock that is called Jesus. No matter what may come, You shall not be moved. So, saints of God, from now onwards, you need to behave with firmness. 
and consistency of your mind. Let me go a little deeper. Do you add any challenges that were mighty and powerful, more than you could handle? yourself, but relying on the power and the strength of Jesus Christ and making use of the whole armor of God, which he advises us to show some resistance. Instead of doing that, we show our weakness to the devil. We want to fight this battle in the flesh. I said to you, this is a spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. So we are to make use of the armor of God. From the crown of your head to the toes of your feet. And then you go to war with the devil and its angels. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. Every eye thing that exalted itself. Against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity. Every thought. To the obedience of Christ Jesus. Who is our Lord and Savior. The Master. Hallelujah. The weapons we fight, which are not the weapons of this world. Remember, we don't take guns, bow and arrows. We don't take all these explosives. What modern technology uses today. These are things of today, but these, what we're fighting in the spiritual realm, is not weapons of this world. Let it be known. That we fight not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and the powers of darkness in high places. They have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments. Every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Hallelujah. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Let us be obedient to the word. We need to take an undertaking by believing God and his word that when we apply the word of God and we show resistance against the devil, he shall flee from you. He will come one way and you will disperse ten, seven different ways. 
Yes, my friend. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, we are reminded. Wherefore, take up unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, that you'll be able to stand. Take the whole armor of God. Remember, you are going to war with the devil. Hallelujah. He says, stand therefore having your loins cut about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet strode on the preparation of the gospel of peace. Remember we are peacemakers, not troublemakers. So we bound to win the battle. Hallelujah. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench the fiery guts of the wicked. Hallelujah. And he goes on. And he says, take the element of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is a word of God. You know, oftentimes we say the word is all powerful. Jesus said, my word shall go forth and not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish itself in the hearts of the people. It will have a breakthrough for the reason that God sent his word forth. Remember, his word is like a two-edged sword. No matter how a difficult person you can be, if God wants to meet with you, the word will cut asunder every force of the enemy and it will destroy it. And it can set you free. We serve a powerful God. Whose name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praying always that our mindset and our focus is upon God. Never to take our eyes away from him and set it elsewhere, but only on Jesus. As David said, I'll look over the hills from whence cometh my help, and my help cometh from the Lord. So you need to ask the question tonight. 
Where is your help coming from? Are you trusting in yourself to fight against the devil? No, my friend. You need Jesus. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the word to conquer the devil and his work. Therefore, Paul says, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. Hallelujah. This is a powerful gospel that has been given to us building up the kingdom of heaven with trust with Christ being the head so we're building up the kingdom of heaven now when the devil sees that you are not doing things in the flesh you're always doing things in the spirit. He's going to stand far away from you. Therefore, Paul says, For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Come on, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it had power unto salvation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It has power. Trust me. As I speak with authority. That no weapons formed against the children of God is going to prosper. Hallelujah. And that's why Paul makes it very clear to say, well, I'm an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So if you are a son of God, you're the preacher, you're the evangelist, and you are passing this message across to the unsaved, and you bring healing to the sick, you need to be bold in everything that you do that when you make a call, when people stand before you, they will see the great power and the anointing of God in your life. And they shall be moved. Hallelujah. And every spiritual bondage shall be broken down in Jesus' name. Whatever sickness, disease, or pandemics the people are suffering from, you can bring deliverance into their lives by rebuking every sickness out of their lives and making them whole. Come on, my friend. You've been called, you have been chosen. So you need to be speaking boldly as the Spirit of God will give utterance. Remember, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks as the Spirit of God ministers through you. 
because the spirit of God is a mediator between man and God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick. And powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even the dividing asunder of soul. And spirit. And of the joints and marrow. And it is a designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Yes, the word of God is quick and sharp. It is powerful. Hallelujah. Piercing and dividing a son of soul and spirit. And of joints and marrow. And in the design of the thoughts. And the intents of the heart. That's what the spirit is there to do. So my friend. Let's put on. The whole armor of God. And show some resistance. When the enemy comes. Then we don't flee from the devil. But stand firm. And showing resistance. And say to the devil. Depart from me. Hallelujah. That's why it's so important to know the word. I remember the time when Jesus was after his 40 days fast. The Bible says he was tempted of the devil. But he didn't entertain the devil. He showed the devil that he was a son of God. And said to the devil. Go behind me Satan. Hallelujah. So don't let the devil to cheat upon you. Resist it. The more you resist the devil. The more he'll stay away from you. Hallelujah. So tonight, this is my word to you, believers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't fear the devil. There's no need for you to fear him. He's not your playmate. He's not connected to you. He's not your relative. He's the devil that destroys the lives of people. Tonight I want to say do not focus what is happening around you Take your focus away from the things and the pleasures of this world. And focus upon Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Come on. Be strong in the word. That you can apply the scriptures and say to the devil, 
I have no dealings with you. I'm not afraid of you. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Today, let us be strengthened in our spirit. Let us not do things in carnal ways, but rather do it in the spirit. Because God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Yes. Glory to God. Let us as children of God, men and women, boys and girls, let us represent the kingdom of God. Let us build up the kingdom of God because his coming is soon. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Friends, even as I come to a close tonight, I want to leave this message of hope that you do things in the spirit and not in the flesh. Do not give way to the devil. Hallelujah. So show some resistance that you are putting up a fight. A spiritual fight. And God is there with you to help you. Hallelujah. Let me pray with you tonight. Wherever you are standing and listening, it's your night tonight to get God in your favor. That you invite Christ into your life and say, Come, Lord Jesus, I'm ready to accept you as my personal savior. I'm ready to give my life unto you, knowing that you came into this world and you died for my sins. To write, help us. That life will not be a struggle anymore. But we know that you're going to undertake for us in a very special way. Father, I pray for your son, Pastor Jolly. Bless him, Lord, together with the ministry. From day to day, as he ministers, he will minister as I say the Lord. And precious souls be added into the kingdom of heaven. And everyone that is working together with the set man of the house, you're going to bless each and every one of us. Father, that we give all our support, our helping hand to the man of God. So this ministry, Father, will be built up that precious souls will be saved in the kingdom of heaven. Those of them that are unwell, sick in their bodies, touch and heal them, Lord. 
let the faith increase. Father, we thank you. As we have entered into the new month of October, Father, let the blessings of the Lord make us rich and add it no sorrow to it. Bless your people abundantly that every need shall be granted unto them. Father, I'm going to thank you right now, even as I sign off. God bless your word. It has fallen on fertile ground. Let it take roots into the hearts and the lives of people. Lord, I thank you. I bless you in Jesus' name. I ask his mercies. Amen and amen. Let alone. Hallelujah. Thank Over you, to you, Pastor Jolly. Thank you for the powerful word of God, Pastor. Pastor was saying, Book of Epic 6, verses 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Pray the Lord. It was the word of God. I believe lots of people receive the encouragement in Christ Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. In Christ, you have received lots of encouragement. We can give the thanks to the Lord for that. Pray the Lord. Pastor Amen. Davis prayed for the nations. I'm not going to pray again. Praise the Lord. So the people, those who are watching, kindly please share this gospel message. Okay. So may our God bless everybody more and more. And Lord, especially I pray for the health of this pastor right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the revival of Africa. All the Africa. Okay, thank you for your giving the spiritual revelation to this pastor and blessing his life, Father. Heavenly Father, once again, more I pray for me. Whatever I do. Father God, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. The grace of Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship with our Holy Spirit be with you all. Surely, the goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever more. Amen. Amen. So, God bless everybody. Uh, so, May our God bless everybody more and more. Okay. Amen. Thank you.